Dear friends, we have often been told that when we ask for something in prayer, we should then act as if we already have it and it will be there. Well, Nello would suggest that we do the same with our desire for the ascension. In volume 27, number 35 of the Pearls of Wisdom, we find this suggestion. I quote, you can understand the personality of God, such as Maitreya, or the great divine director, who has retained identity and passed through many ages, ages of gold and ages of darkness. Understanding how that God personality is formed by experience and by service, you can expect to meet, as you would call them, professionals in the fields of cosmic service, well-defined, of a certainty and a, an humbleness of a vision and a majesty. These qualities would be the quintessence and the point of self-transcendence of anyone you know. Take the most precious qualities of one you love and realize the extent of these full-blown, formed and in alignment with the universal one. And you can begin to see with the Immaculate Eye how our friends and companions might appear as ascended beings. You ought to, you ought to visualize yourself in this highest sense and realize that the lesser manifestations will all pass. The frustrations and tensions of life are not there. After all, you yourself know what is real within, and you know when your expressions stray from that inner presence. Though others may assign to you foibles and sins as though they were carved in stone forever, you know these are not real, and you do know what is true about yourself. God knows even better what is true, beloved hearts. For you see, in all of your perceptions of self, sometimes you include in the image of the real that which we do not, that which will truly be transformed almost beyond recognition in the hour of your resurrection. Thus, beloved ones, do not consider yourselves so far from immortality or the immortals. For in so doing, we are closed out from everyday experience. We would almost rather have you fancy our presence when it is not always there, than to assume empirically that we are not, but rather gathered in some far off mountain or in a retreat or in an Elysian field. The angels and co-workers of our bands and the unascended saints are very close especially when the atmosphere of the aura bears a similitude to the sun itself, a joy and a radiance, a purpose. Just as you do not like to stay in places of discord or the noise and the din and the cheapening images and vibrations found in modern entertainment, so we must also withdraw when those preoccupy space and time and consciousness. But this is not so often for yourself. And often when you do make a study of these situations, we are present, using your own four lower bodies to experience in a more earthly sense the impact of those things that ought not to be in this octave. When you retain 
a practical awareness of life and its problems. This can be more easily communicated to many levels of our service and our servants by contact with yourselves. When you place emphasis of importance on certain conditions, it also draws attention from the hierarchies of light. And therefore you might say that in darkness you are the light of our eyes and our senses. And therefore we perceive as you perceive and find very valuable your own Christ awareness that sheds light on the octave of your dwelling, even as we shed light in the active in the octave of our abode. Now these octaves may be portrayed as one above the other, like wooden men carved and piled high upon one and the other, or as a spir uh, spiral staircase. But these images serve to indicate an acceleration of vibration rather than a distance in time and space. The only distance you will find between heaven and hell is in the very fact that we prefer not to cohabitate with the lower vibrations and therefore define our slice of infinity far removed from the depths of darkness. And yet, it is true that the consciousness of God is anywhere where the point of that Christ mind will focalize it. Heaven can be in hell when a son of God is there, but unless the chalice and the vessel be present, you understand, the free will of the occupants determines the vibrational level. And thus, it seems in the matter universe that there has come about a compartmentalization. As our saints move up the physical mountain, we also tend to focus our retreats there. Thus, in an aura of non-contamination, we are free to exalt the Godhead without the counteracting influences. I speak to each and every heart, to my blessed, to each one. I encourage you to keep striving and to become all that you are. The flower that you offer on the altar of God as the gift of this life can come in full bloom with multiple petals and manifestations of the octaves according to free will. No final destiny seals or limits your expression of the Godhead. You can be that of God which you desire to be, free of the impositions of others' ideas of what you ought to be. End of quote. So what difference would there be in your moment-by-moment -moment daily life if you lived it as you could visualize an, ex an ascended being living in. See yourself as immortal now, which you are. And if you are immortal now, you are among immortal beings, angels, ascended masters, etc. Begin now to be aware of their presences. Speak to them and they will speak to you. Spend time in this awareness every day until it becomes an every moment occurrence. Strive to become all that an ascended master is. This is your challenge now. May God richly bless you this week in your meditation.